For the following exercises, sketch a graph of the piecewise function. Write the domain in interval notation. All right, so uh, just remember that the uh, piecewise function, right, is simply a function defined by two or more formulas over a certain domain or a certain set of x values. So when we look at our first case, right, we know this is a piecewise function because there are two formulas that are present. Here's formula number one, and here is formula number two. And each of those formulas have a different domain to them. That's the domain for number one, where x has to be less than one. And this is the domain for number two, where x has to be greater than or equal to one. So what we're going to do first is uh, the best thing to do with a piecewise function is to analyze it in pieces. All right, so analyze each part of the piecewise function as independent pieces. So first thing I'm going to do is try to graph this thing. All right. Basically, I'm going to try to graph this formula with this condition. Okay. So essentially, we have f of x equaling x plus 1. Now, instead of f of x, I'm just going to use the term y, though. So y is equal to x plus 1. Now, I know x has to be less than, all right, less than 1. But to find my first point, I'm actually going to plug in the value of 1 into here because I know I can put a circle, an open circle, at that location. So I'm going to plug in the value of 1 for x and then solve this for y. So I know when x is 1, y will be 2. Where's that located on the graph? Well, it's located right here, right? 1 over and 2 up. So this, though, circle will not be closed. Remember, it's going to be an open circle. Why? Because this says less than. It doesn't say less than or equal to. All right, I wrote you some notes down here at the bottom about what greater than, less than means open. And whenever you hear greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, it's a filled circle. All right. So we got that open circle there. Now, what we're going to do is we are now going to um, plug in. Sorry, just trying to erase this. I don't know why it's not erasing at the moment. Okay, something, something. There's a glitch, but no big deal. So now what I want to do is plug in another value here for, I should say another value here for x, but I have to follow this condition. So x has to be less than 1. So why don't we plug in 0, right? 0 is less than 1. So plug in 0 for x. Tell me what y is. Y is indeed 1. So this tells me when x is 0, y is 1. Where is that located? Well, that's located right here. Okay. I can keep going, right? I could plug in then the value of negative 1 in here, and that would be 0. That, part, that point would be located right here. And I think we start to see the pattern. All right. So we can begin to see that particular pattern. All right. So um, let's now draw the line. So the line here is going to look just like this. It's going to pass through all these points, try to do my best. I'll stop right about there. And we'll keep it right there. That's fine. That's close enough. All right. So it's going to continue on forever. Okay. All the way less than um, x is 1. So that takes care of the first part. Now let's look at the second part of the piecewise. So again, write your function. This is going to be y is equal to now x to the third. Plug in the value that they gave you as far as the constraint. Plug in the value of 1 here for x. So y will be equal to 1 cubed, and that is going to be 1. So when x is 1, y is 1. Where is that located? It's located right at this point right here. Now, is it a filled circle? Of course it is. Of course it's filled. Why? Because it told us greater than or equal to. All right, it told us this part in black down here. We're going to use a filled circle. Okay, easy enough. So now what do we do? Now we plug in another value for x, all right, such that it satisfies this constraint. So why don't you choose 2, right? That's a nice easy number, 2 cubed. So that becomes 2 times 2 times 2, so that's a value of 8. So when x is 2, y is indeed 8. Where is that located? So that's located, here's x is 2, so now we got to go up 8 spots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oh, basically off the graph. <laughs> it's basically right up here, okay? Actually, what I'll do is I think I should be able to just move this down a little bit. Oh, hold on one second. I'm going to make sure everything is contained. One second. Isn't this so much better than working with pen and paper? If I make a mistake, just just move it. <laughs> So now uh, we got to go up eight spots, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And here's the new point, okay? Now, obviously, you see that this is going to be a, a, a largely increasing function, all 
all right? So when I draw my line, it's going to look kind of straight, but there should be a little bit of a curve to it, all right? I'll try to, well, it didn't really curve. It'll be a little curved. Let's see if it'll do it. Okay, it'll be kind of curved. This line almost looks like it's going to come back here. It's not, though. It's going to keep on going in the, let me see if I can do it one more time. And then if not, then we're just going to give up, right? Okay, that looks straight now. Should have stuck. Life lesson, life lesson. When it's good enough, just be satisfied with it. <laughs> okay, we're going to do this by hand. All right, so it's going to just go up just like this and whatever. Now it's going to continue on forever, and it's always going to keep moving in the positive x direction. Okay, it doesn't look like that based on the graph because the graph is kind of, you know, small. I mean, the, the domain of this thing is huge, but you have to imagine what it, what it would what it would do as x becomes larger. So now if I want to write the domain, all right, in interval notation, I realize that this thing will go all the way out to negative infinity, all right, in the x direction. So that's fine. And I also know that this thing will go eventually all the way out to positive infinity in the x direction. The only thing I got to watch out for is this point in the middle. But as long as for when x is equal, for when x is 1, I have to make sure one of these two is filled. As long as one of them is filled, we're good. Okay? Actually, if they're both filled, that's a problem, right? Could they both be filled? Here's a question. Could they both be filled? Meaning if this was filled too. Could they both be filled and this thing still be called a piecewise function? The answer is no, because it fails the vertical line test. All right, so maybe a trick question on your test. I don't know. All right, so um, that being the case, we know that the domain here is going to be all the way from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. So that takes care of that. Second one. Let's see if we can run through this one. All right. So here's the first equation with its constraint. So we say that y, let me, hold on, let me get the right color. So we have here that y will be equal to absolute value of x. All right for such that x is gonna be less than two. So remember the first thing is we actually plug in the value of two just to find the location of the open circle because it's a less than sign. So this is gonna be equal to uh, absolute value of two and what does that become? Obviously just two, right? So when x is two, y is two. So where's that located? It's located right here. Has to be an open circle though, okay? As we have explained before. Now I'm going to choose another value for x, such that it satisfies the condition x has to be less than 2. So why don't we plug in a value of 1? What does that become? Well, that's just going to be 1. So that works out to here, right? 1, 1. Then what happens if we do 0? You plug in a 0, absolute value 0, 0. And now you might say, incorrectly though, you might say, oh, look, this thing's just going to keep on going. Mm -mm -mm. All right, why don't we do another value? And then you'll see. What happens when y is, uh, excuse me, when x is negative 1? What's y? y is now positive 1. So where is this point, negative 1, comma 1, located? Well, that's located actually right here now. Oh, that's strange. And what about if I do 2, negative 2 that is for x? Guess where the next point's going to be? It's going to be here. And we're going to keep on going. Okay, this is the nature. Absolute value functions are v-shaped, and you can see it now. All right, so let's draw this in. So that looks terrible. <laughs> so let's try this one more time. That takes care of that. And now let's do this side. That looks a little better. There we go. I'm very particular, as you can see. Not with my handwriting, but with my graphs. So um, we have now, we, we graph the top part. Okay, so that is all taken care of. So we are we are good with this, all right? So now we'll take a look at the uh, second part of the piece. So it says one if x is greater than or equal to two. So let's write it out. So y will equal one. Okay, well there's no x here, right? So who cares what x is? It's not going to influence the value of y. So what I do know is I do know that the graph of y is equal to one looks kind of like a horizontal line, correct? However, you can't, you, you have a certain restriction with, with the x values that you can write this horizontal line for, right? The x values have to be greater than or equal to 2. So what that means is that you got to cut it off here, basically, okay? You can't write this part to the left. So that being said, we're going to 
put a dot because it includes two and because of the greater than or equal to and we're going to draw the horizontal line all the way on out and you can see where this is going to go all the way to infinity so now we have to think about the domain okay the leftmost port uh, point of this is going to go all the way out to negative infinity the rightmost point it's going to go all the way out to positive infinity is there anything that we need to be concerned about in the middle here no because one of these two pieces of the piecewise function is filled in for the value of two. Therefore, two is a two is part of the domain. There's nothing special about it. So the domain here is again simply negative infinity to infinity. And that's all. Guys, thanks for tuning in. I really do hope this helped. And if it did, subscribe to the channel. All right, we're gonna have more stuff coming out to you. Try to provide a lot of value to you. All right. Take care.